Okay, we are on number 18. Um, find the inverse of each function. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out your f of x, replace it with y. You're now going to switch your x and your y's. Now you're going to solve for y. I'm going to take the 1 to the other side by adding 1 to both sides. And that's going to give me x plus 1 equals 3y. Now divide by 3. And you end up with this right here, y equals that. Now you're going to take the y out and you're just going to rename it with the correct notation of the inverse of f of x is equal to x plus 1 over 3. Okay. Um, the next problem. Again, you're going to take this out. I'm going to move this over here. Instead of working it down, I'm going to move it over here to give me more room. I'm going to replace the g of x with y. You will switch your x and your y. X goes here, 1 fourth Y goes here, plus 2. Okay, I'm going to get this 2 over to the other side by subtracting it. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I get X minus 2 equals 1 fourth Y. Now, um, I am going to, and I didn't write down the step where I subtracted 2. If you look at my answers, my written out answers, I did, so I'm just talking this through. To get rid of 1 fourth, because it's 1 fourth times y, I'm going to multiply by 4. Because 1 fourth times 4 gives me 1y. If I multiply that side by 4, I must multiply this side by 4. Over here, I'm going to get 4x minus 8. Over here, 1 4 times 4 gives me 1y, or just y. Now, the correct notation would be the inverse of g of x equals that 4x minus 8. Now, you can always check these answers. If you take this and plug it in here, it'll reduce down to x. If you take this and plug it in here, it will reduce down to x. Same thing here. If you take this and plug it in here, this will give us x, or it should, otherwise they're not inverses. Or, if I take this and plug it in here, it will reduce down to x. Okay, so, um, let's see. Again, I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to replace it with y equals to x cubed minus 5. I'm going to switch my x and my y. So this becomes an x. Over here I have 2y cubed minus 5. Now I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to get this 5 over to the other side. I'm going to do that by adding it so that I have x plus 5 on the left side. I have 2y cubed on the right side. Now to get rid of the 2, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I have x plus 5 over 2 on this side. And over here, I have y cubed. Okay, I need to still get y by itself. It is cubed. The opposite of cubing something is taking the cube root. If I take the cube root of a cube, this cancels that out. If I do that to this side, I must do it to this side. So, this side gives us y. Okay, but I'm going to take this y out. Okay, that gives us just y. I'm going to take that out and go ahead and write the correct notation. It's always the last step is equal to the cube root of x plus 5 over 2.
Okay, in the last one, I'm going to take this out, replace it with Y. I'm going to switch my X and my Y, so X goes here, Y goes here. Okay. Oops, it would help if you could see it, sorry. Okay, so what I did was I took this out, replaced it with Y, then I switched my X and my Y, and I'm right here. Sorry, didn't know you couldn't see it on the screen. Now, I'm going to take this negative 2 or the minus 2 over to the other side. I'm going to do that by adding it so that I get X plus 2 on the left. I'm left with the cube root of Y plus 1 on the right. Now, I need to get rid of this cube. Well, the opposite, I'm sorry, cube root. The opposite of cube root is to cube something. That is going to cancel that out. If I cube that side, I must cube this side. The nice thing is, is I am not going to expect you to do x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2. You can just leave your answer in this form. Right there. Over here, I'm left with y plus 1. I now have to get the 1 to the other side. I'm going to do that by subtracting 1 so that I end up with the quantity of x plus 2 cubed minus 1 equals y. Now I just need to do the correct notation and rewrite it. And there we have it. Okay. Number 19. Suppose that $1,000 is deposited in a savings account paying 3% interest compounded continuously. Because of this here, you are going to use this formula right here. Okay. Again, formulas will be given. You'll have to know which one to use. If it's compounded annually, compounded uh, weekly, compounded monthly, which I'm not sure if you have one of that. those. Let me just look at something really quick. Oh, in number 20, you'll use the other one, okay? But I will give you this one, or I'll give you the other one, or both of them. I'll give you both. You have to decide which one to use when. Okay, it says, how long will it take you to double the money? All right, so we are given the $1,000. That's our big chunk of money that we are going to deposit. That's our initial deposit, so that's going to be our P. It's E to the interest rate is 3%. Well, you got to change that to a decimal by dividing 3 by 100. If you divide it, it moves the your decimal over two places, which is 0 0.03. So you have 0 0.03, not 3. And it says, suppose $1,000 is deposited in a savings account, paying that interest compounded continuously. How long? So that means we are solving for our T. Will it take to double the money? Well, if it started at 1000 and it doubled, our amount will be 2000 That's our future amount. Okay. To um, solve this problem, we first got to get rid of the 1000 This is going to give us 2 equals e to the point zero three t All right. So our variable is in our exponent. In order to get that out of the exponent, we're going to do the opposite of e to some power. The opposite, what will undo it, is taking the natural log because that has a base e. By taking the natural log, these two cancel to free up our exponents. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. 
So now we have the natural log of 2. You can put it in parentheses, or you don't have to, it doesn't really matter. Equals 0.03t. Now I need to solve for t, so I'm going to divide by 0.03. And let me write my answer over here. Uh, let me turn my calculator. We're going to do the natural log of 2. Make sure you close that parenthesis, otherwise it'll give you the different answer. Divided by 0 0.03. And we get approximately 23 years. Because it says round to the nearest year. How long will it take to triple the money? It's going to be the exact same problem. Triple 1,000. You just multiply it by 3. So it's going to be 3,000. So it works the exact same way. You're going to divide again by 1,000. Because we've got to get this part by itself. You can't do anything. You can't take any log, natural log, log base 2, anything, until you get that part by itself. That cancels that out. And we get 3 over here. Equals e to the point o three t Now that we have it by itself, the opposite of base e would be the natural log. That cancels that out. Take the natural log of that side, you got to take the natural log of this side. So I have the natural log of 3 equals 0.03t divided by 0 0.03. So we have the natural log of 3 divided by 0 0.03. And we're going to get about 37 years. Okay. All right. Let's see. I think I'll go to the end of this page and then do another video. How would an account beginning with fifteen hundred? Let's try this again. Would an account beginning with 1500 be worth more after 10 years if 8% compounded quarterly or 7.75% compounded weekly? Okay, so we're going to have to do two different problems. Now, because it says compounded quarterly and compounded weekly, it is a different formula. This formula is this one right here. And again, I will put this formula... Well, let me write the formula first. It's P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the N T. N is the number of payments per year or number of compounded payments or uh, yeah, interest being paid, whatever it's compounded. In this case, it's quarterly. So that's going to happen four times a year, so our n is four. Here, it's compounded weekly. So it is compounded weekly, so n equals 52. All right, so when you take your test, I will put the, I will give you this formula and this formula, but I won't, not for the in particular problems. I'll just have those two formulas for you. You have to decide on which one to use. Again, everything uses the other one except for compounded continuously. So in this particular problem, okay, the P is the initial amount that you are going to put in there. That's our principal. Let's first do this first one. 1500 goes here. 1 plus our interest rate for quarterly is 0.08. Because again, you're dividing this by 
100, and that's what makes your decimal move two places. So your rate is 0 0.08. It's compounded quarterly, so it's divided by n, which is 4. Raised to the 4 times our time in years, and it's 10 years. So you just, at this point, it's just plug and chug. You just take your calculator. You say, let me clear this out, 1500, beginning in parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4, raised to the 4 times 10, or you could have just put 40. And at the end of 10 years, the 1500 has grown to $3,312.00. And six cents. Okay, so I don't know why that one and the two is so small. <laughs> Sorry, that bothers me. It's still not a whole lot better, but it's a little bit. All right, so that's the first one. Well, now let's see what we have a lower rate, but it's compounded more 52 weeks. So here. Again, we are going to divide this by 100, and when you do that, it moves your decimal left two places. So it's 0 0.0775. So again, you're going to do amount, future amount equals 1500. That's we're still putting in the same amount. 1 plus 0 0.0775 divided by, in this case it's weekly, so it's 52, raised to the 52 times in our, it's still 10 years. Alright, so we're just going to take 1500, we're going to do the same again, let's just plug and chug into our calculator. 1 plus 0 0.0775 divided by 52, ending parentheses, raised to the 52 times 10. And it's $3,254.01. Okay, it didn't tell us what to round, but money is always two decimal places. So in this case, we ended up with this amount. So this one paid more. There were less compounded weekly, but our interest rate was more. So this one was more, and it says how much more. Okay, so this was the answer to the first question. How much more is you take these two and subtract them. And when you subtract these two, 3312.06 minus 30, whoops, let's try it again, 3254.01, you end up with $58.05. So not a ton, but it's still more. So that is the answer to the second question. Okay. Use the properties of logarithms to completely expand the expression with no exponents or radicals present. Okay, so that's the key thing. We've got a radical. We need to get rid of it. So the first thing you have to do is know how to rewrite this without this cube root. It's going to be written. Let me just do this underneath. Okay, let me do it here. We talked about this in class, where to make this, this x squared, cube root of x squared, you write this as x to the two-thirds. Your root is always your denominator. y to the, this has a 1, so it would be y to the one-third. All over w, z squared. Okay. The shortcut to this is anything on the top is positive, anything to the, or addition, whatever, positive. Anything on the bottom is subtraction, or I think of it as negative. 
So to expand it, I'm going to do this in two steps. You're first going to have natural law of x to the two-thirds plus, because addition goes with multiplication, natural log of y to the one-third. This is on the bottom, so it's going to be minus. The shortcut to this is make anything on the bottom subtraction. That's w minus natural log of z squared. Now what you do is we don't want fractional exponents. We don't want any exponents. So the exponent rules take it to the front. So we're going to have 2 thirds natural log of x plus take that to the front, 1 third times the natural log of y minus the natural log of w minus take the, uh, the exponent of 2, I can't get that out, take it to the front and so we have 2 natural log of z. And that's the whole expanded form. Okay, right here, use the properties of logarithms to write the following as a single logarithm with a coefficient of 1, simplifying as much as possible. Okay, so we've got numbers in the front that really becomes exponents. So again, I'm not going to do this all at once. I'm going to do this in two steps. So this first one is log of x to the 8th power minus log of z to the 2nd power minus log of y to the 7th power. Now that we've done that, we can um, write it all as a single logarithm. If it's positive, it goes on the top. If it's negative, it goes to the bottom. So, this is positive, so it stays on the top. This is negative, so the z to the second goes to the bottom. This is negative, so it's y to the seventh goes on the bottom. And that's it. Okay, I'll stop right there.